Hey guys, it's the phenomenal stemist, and I have with me Mrs. Kelsia Manzana. Is that that's how you pronounce your name, your married name? Mazana. 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 And Kelsia is a project engineer. Yes. So we, which it's Women's History Month, Women in Science, and I got, I have right here with us a project engineer. She has her bachelor's um, in math and environmental engineering and a master's in environmental engineering. And she is in the Society for Women Engineers. I always want to have, I was telling Kelsey this, uh, finish lines. And there are not a lot of female engineers, period, much less African, black or African-American uh, engineers, and she's been honored as you know by the um, Orlando Business Journal as one of the forty under forty. She's doing big things, and she goes to my church. I'm I'm about to post this on Pat Miss's education page. <laughs> yeah, married for thirteen years and a seven year old daughter. Um, thank you for joining us today, Kelsey. I really appreciate it. Thank you for having me, Maya. Absolutely. So my first question to you is, when did you fall in love with your discipline? Oh, well, that goes way back for me. I actually was doing very well in math and have always had an aptitude for the sciences. So my uncle actually saw that in me mm. and he said, you know, why don't you look into environmental engineering? Uh, and when he said that, I actually started thinking about it. Because before, before that, I actually wanted to be a banker. Banker? <laughs> a banker. You probably would have made more money as a banker. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, but, yeah, and he actually gave me my first summer job. So wow. I would go around and um, inspect the meters that they had on the island. I'm mm -hmm. from the island of Antigua, you'll hear the accent. Right. <laughs> so we would go around the island. I love that summer job, riding on cuts with the guys, <laughs> just running around and doing all sorts of things, picking fruits from the trees. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And I fell in love with environmental engineering from that, that time. Shout out to your uncle. Not many West Indian men, well, you know, I'm not going to say that, but promote women. Is that true? Maybe, maybe, is, am I right at that? Like women professionals, you know, they say you need to stay home and take care of the babies and get barefoot and pregnant. I'm not insulting all the, you know, West Indian males. Um, yeah, I was very lucky to have an uncle who was very progressive. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's shout out to your uncle. So you fell in love, you were nurtured by a male in your life and didn't feel intimidated by many of the males in your lives as you were working with many of them. Um, because that's truth be told, engineering is a male dominated field. It is. And it takes, you know, sometimes men to encourage women. Uh, that's to make them feel that they can definitely do this. And so from a child, you were nurtured by a male in your life and you learned the trade um, and became a, an, an engineer because you were always good in math. So you could have done something in business, mathematics or, or engineering. And you chose this route uh, because of the guidance of your uncle. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. OK, number two, um, what tools did you use to discipline yourself? Uh, in college. So you, you're taking a lot of these courses that are difficult. How did you discipline yourself? Well, uh, as my, my resume says, I did a, a bachelor's in math first. Mm -hmm. actually went to Bethune-Cookman College and... HBCU! Uh, HBCU! <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, I actually met more male mentors there mm. that actually encouraged you know, the engineering aspect. Wow. Um, so I did my mathematics. I, I did pre-engineering courses there. And they, they tremendous, you know, they gave me a boost. Yeah. So that I felt like I could do anything. Wow. Yeah. 
Awesome. <laughs> okay, so 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 you were all you were basically um good already. Like you were pretty good in math, you were solid in math, you you were disciplined in math, but what you needed was mentorship. Yes. And people to actually boost you and a lot of them will keep going back to were males. Mm -hmm. Were males. And so it's not as as um exclusive as it needs to be. You don't feel threatened if you see potential in the, they obviously saw that you were about the business. You know, they if they didn't feel that you did, couldn't if, if they felt that you couldn't do it, they wouldn't have encouraged you. So you had to be about the business. And that's how it is in male dominated fields. And 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 hey ladies, STEM is male dominated. It's just, it is what it is. And 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 I feel in my opinion Kelsey, I don't know if you feel that men are very cut and dry. Like if you want to compete, you got to compete just as hard as they compete, no excuses, not even the good ones, right? And if you come like that, they will they will develop a respect for you. And yes. once they respect you, man, you can go places. <laughs> Yeah. Yes, you definitely, you definitely need to keep up. Right. And, and push hard. Push <laughs> hard. Push hard. Hey, Yona. Hey, Esther. Thank you guys for joining. Okay. So, um, basically, you got good mentorships, and that helped to discipline you. That's what you're saying. Yes, absolutely. Um, and you know that right along with my discipline from being in Pathfinders, mm. I grew up in Pathfinders. You know. That in itself taught me discipline. So shout out to <laughs> shout out to these youth groups in our church. So Pathfinders, for some of you who don't know, is it's basically a, a unisex Boy Scout. So it's girls and gr boys together. Um, I grew up in Pathfinders as well, Kelsey. It's so important that we we invest in our young people. We were talking about this yesterday in the church. Because it was through Pathfinders that gave me great discipline. Shout out to Julianne Boyce, who was my counselor, right? Like great discipline to the point where, you know, you, you nowadays, like you can't, we had to have our, both our white gloves. We had to have our belts. We had to have our scarves. We had to have the pin that, like you can't. <laughs> shoes had to be signed. Shoes had to be signed. You know, it, it's it's no and and that that those kind of church um, activities really disciplined us. So we maintain that discipline as youth in our college years. Wow! So you credit your discipline to your childhood rearing, not just at home but in the church. Yes, absolutely. Hmm. Well, wow, that's yeah. a good one. Not at all on my own. <laughs> wow! Wow! Not so. I, 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 what I'm gathering from her is like mentors at school, mentors at home, mentors at church. Guys, where are the mentors? We gotta get, we gotta bring that back. And so I'm thankful that you have come to be a mentor, even if it's via video, because there are a lot of people who um, are uh, who want to be engineers and they don't necessarily know how. All right, number three. We actually, Maya, we actually do have mentorship mm -hmm. and. A society of women engineers. Okay. I actually have a program where we link up students with professionals mm. if they so choose. Um, so if anyone you know wants to get mentored in that way, you know, just have them hook up with you, and you can pass them along. Absolutely. You heard them. You heard her. <laughs> that sounds good. That sounds good. So, what are some challenges that you had in school? What were the challenges that you had there? Oh, wow. In school, um, in high school, you know, I transitioned from the islands into high school in the, in St. Croix, U.S. Virgin Islands. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just the transition was a challenge in itself. And then I transitioned to the States, mm -hmm. going into college by myself. Um, I was the only one in America, didn't know anyone. So, that in itself was a big challenge, a big hurdle for me to overcome. Wow. So you were, shout out to immigrants, <laughs> and you, immig you immigrated to this country um, all by yourself. And so, all by myself. so yes. if you were, you, it's not even just like your, 
in the same country but far away, but you, you, like there's nobody there, and you get deeply homesick. Like I remember when I went to Oakwood, which is, which was 16 hours away from home. I guess 16 hours away from home is the same thing as 16 hours away from um, Antigua, but the difference is it's a different, it's not about just a time frame, it's a, it's a different culture. It's a different culture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, 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 and you didn't, and you have to learn to adapt. Mm -hmm. So your struggles were that you came to a totally new place, didn't know anybody, foreign, um, for from this in this country, and you had to learn how to adapt. Wow! And then I'll tell you, for that struggle, I actually turned to the church again. Mm. I had a local church, and we actually there was a family who came in uh, just about the same time, and we bonded. Um, mm. It just turned out that that family came from Saint Croix as well. Okay. So again, the Lord made the way for me to have. Uh, an adopted family. Yeah, a network, a safe place. Yes. The church. The church is so important. And I say this like I'm trying to write a book. And I and I, and as scientists, you know, um, many scientists don't believe in God. And 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 there's no way I can separate my belief in God from my success in STEM. Because basically, a lot of the time, success in STEM comes from having a calm spirit through the trials of, of STEM, right? Being able to manage and to maintain your sanity, you know, in the midst of hard tests, you know, hard dissertations, right? And, and people like, how do you, huh? Long hours. long hours, very long hours, right? Anx anxiety. But somehow the peace of God calms you to the place where the people don't, under even, don't even understand. And then you have the people that can surround you and be your, your safety net in the midst of having being a stranger in a, in a strange land. That's the theme tonight. The church is important, guys. And so mentors are important from the church. Programs that help foster discipline uh, for the youth of the church. That leads to STEM students. And you know, it's, you know, a lot of us be like, oh, just study math and science, that's it. No, that God plays a role. He did, and he played a big role for me. Wow. <laughs> That's you're the first person who I mean we all many people talk about God and the Spirit leading, but you're you're literally talking about different ways God um, helped you become an engineer. Okay, so tell me what you do now. Tell me a little bit about what you do now, and then tell me what your challenges are. Okay, um, for me, I work for a firm called Reese Engineering, and we're consulting. So. Mm -hmm. I, I my role right now is client manager. Um, I do a lot of traveling. Um, I have clients all over the central Florida area. Um, a couple of clients down south as well. So I would see what those clients need and help them mm -hmm. to solve a, a, an issue, a problem that they they have. Mm -hmm. My focus is in utilities. So wastewater treatment plants, water treatment plants, um, pipes that bring the water to your homes, um, pipes that take away the water from your home, all the pumping infrastructure in between. Um, that's that's the, the focus for us. I was talking to a couple of engineers before, so you're my third engineer, and I, I'll say this again. Um, there's so many roles in terms of wastewater management and utilities, right? But many times they they promote it to to the people of color, like the technician jobs. But you you can have a you you can be an engineer for the same company, but you're now managing how these things are built and making sure they're built properly versus. Fixing that's just the, you're you're build you're the builder or you're the person who's looking at the design of the of the build right? Yes, we we are designers. Yeah, and 
my my role, you know, I connect the designers with the client to solve the problem. Wow. I love that. You connect the design engineers are the designers and you're a consultant engineer who connects another engineer with uh the pro with the people who run the business or whatever to solve the problem. I love yeah. that. Wow. Interesting. So what are your challenges? Uh for me right now there's a a second test that I have to take. Oh, it's PE. oh my goodness. And that's running me ragged. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That is the professional engineering license, correct? Yes. yes. So the other two engineers I had that were guys, they were talking about that, how it's so imperative. It really distinguishes uh, engineers. I mean, to the point where it's the saying, okay, I'm a licensed engineer. Correct. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so you're so you're going for your license. Yes. Yeah. And it's a tough test. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's a very hard test. Um but the reality is we have to get licensed. Yes. That's what sets us apart. It's imperative. Huh? It's imperative. It's imperative to not just finish school, get an engineering degree. You also have to get a license. And licensing requires standardized tests. So parents, those of you who hate standardized tests as your children, you have to swallow your hate for it and get them prepared because we will be taking standardized tests in terms of stem for the rest of our career <laughs> right mcats you talked we talked about the mcat with the medical school school person last last week the dat for the dentist the week before the pe license the nclex for nursing license that's just the reality of these types of fields to set yourself apart you got to get licensed and so that's what's tough for you huh oh wow pray for me <laughs> <laughs> like how, how often do you study like how long do you have to study plus you're working you're a mother you're a wife wow that's um, a lot yes it's, it's a challenge mm -hmm. i i'm actually doing some courses right now mm -hmm. so we we're in class from 7 to 10 p.m with it, which is another challenge for me because I'm an early bird but sleeping and rising. So. <laughs> and you got to be up till 10 p.m. at night. <laughs> That's funny. I'm trying to keep those islands away. It's just 10 o'clock. You know, like most of us go to bed at midnight. That's funny. Okay, so so having to take go back to school to prepare for your license is a challenge. Wow. Okay. All right. Well, what's your what's the favorite part of your career? Uh, like I said before, I am a the client manager. I enjoy the connection with the clients. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. one of the things that I absolutely love. There's travel that's in it, but you know I really don't mind the travel. Because I get to engage, and I get to engage one on one. Um, I prefer that type of engagement, and I get to hear what the issues are and help them solve that problem. Wow! So who, you know, it's funny. Like everybody that I've spoken to, I mean, a lot of people that I'm still speaking to, STEM is so scientific and analytical. But once you finish school, there's heavy people management. Yes. So it's, you know, some people say this, I don't want to be a scientist, engineer, mathematician, because they're all nerds who stay in a corner and, you know, and to themselves. Is that, that's obviously not true. That is not true. Not the case. No. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> very personable. We're, we're very personable people. And a lot of our jobs, if you want to be a people person, you can still do a STEM degree. And the, and the, um, What's the word I want to say? It's not as outsourceable as other helping people jobs. So you're actually, you know, I, I want to be a, a such and such because I want to help people. Well, you're helping people. Mm -hmm. You're helping people. Okay. Yeah. Well, um, uh, Kelsia, I really appreciate this time that you've taken with me, taken away from your studies. <laughs> Uh, for that license, 
Um, but she really taught us a lot about how important it is uh, to have a network in the STEM fields. And it's so important that our parents and our church family, um, in order to foster future STEMists, we got to get ourselves right. <laughs> yeah. Have to engage with them. You have to engage them. Be their mentor. Be their mentor. Mentorship, guys. I'm calling on many people, not just people who are people in STEMists, or meaning that people have a degree in STEM, but just disciplinarians. People who are good at disciplinary behavior, not abusive, <laughs> but good at uh, to start mentoring children and get them well disciplined because you, you'll never know what kind of impact you have. Hey, Kimberly. Thank you. Thank you guys for joining. Thank you so much, Kelsia. This is Kelsia Manzana. I am the phenomenal STEMist. And so is she, project engineer. Yeah. Good night, guys. Thank you, Maya. Thank you for being here.